Richard was very, very interested in space technologies. So he had us out looking for different ideas. And we actually went to look at a couple of space projects long before we looked at Bert Rutan's X Prize winning vehicles that he was developing. What brought us to Bert was actually working on the Global Flyer project with Steve Fawcett. I became convinced that carbon composites were ready to take on space. And Bert obviously did a very good job of proving that to all of us by the fact that he built Spaceship One. The use of 100% composite on the scale of these vehicles has not been done before. I mean, we're dealing with a vehicle in White Knight 2, which is a very high altitude four engine jet. The spaceship itself is 100% composite. And I think the use of those technologies is, is one of the breakthroughs which has married the ideas of the aerodynamicist with the ideas of the rocket scientist and the space physicist. The biggest challenges have been convincing people that the technology is actually there now to do this. Getting over people's prejudices about the cost of spaceflight and its experimental and exploratory nature. You know, thousands of satellites are put safely into space. What they see is the history, the shuttle disasters, and they don't really understand that that type of spaceflight is nowhere near what is possible with modern aviation technology. This is basically an aeroplane that flies to space, but it's been developed out of aviation technology, not out of space technology. The only way we're going to make space work for us on the planet Earth is to get much cheaper space launch systems. We're only going to get much cheaper space launch systems if we can prove that we can re regularly and reliably take people and payload into space. This project will prove that. And this project, I think, is one of the most important industrial projects of the 21st century in that we need to use space now. We have all the technologies which can take a lot of the heat out of the atmosphere by doing things in space we currently do inside the planet's atmosphere. But the problem is we have 60-year-old technologies to get our satellites up there to do these things and they don't work very well and they're damned expensive. So if we can lower the cost this significantly and that relies on cheap, environmentally benign space launch systems and this is the first of them. One of the fascinating things about this project is if you look at the technologies involved, they're not, being, they're not technologies used in commercial aviation yet big 100% composite vehicles. If you look at the idea of air launch and going outside the planet's atmosphere, we've not thought about that for travel around the planet yet. However, I think one of the most important things long term about this project is it does provide a prelude to a world whereby we do travel around the atmosphere by getting outside the atmosphere. For long haul travel, I think that's going to be one of the keys to the next 30 years. I think what we would need to really achieve that is a new type of engine. We'll need an air-breathing and non-air-breathing engine combined. What's called a reaction engine by many people. And if an engine like that can be developed, that can be air-breathing one moment, and it can add its own oxygen or other propellant into its system for use outside the atmosphere, then that's where future commercial aviation will be.